He was charged with a sex crime at work, then found not guilty in court. I teach my children that, you know, you have to fight and you have to stand up for what's right. Now his wife wants a public apology from his boss. Just to see someone that you love go through such a difficult time um, when it seems so unnecessary. The Defenders, tonight at 11. All right, welcome back, everybody. It's time for today's buzz at 454. A rare and interesting discovery was made inside of a book at a New York College library tucked inside of an 18th century almanac. A lock of George Washington's hair was found. The almanac belonged to a general who was a friend of the first president. The hair was inside an envelope in the book. The strands tied together by a single thread. Now archivists at Union College are tracing the school's roots and connections to George Washington. Well, how about this? People living in liberal Kansas celebrated a town tradition with their annual Pancake Day race. The tradition started when a busy housewife in Olney arrived at church still clutching her frying pan with a pancake in it. No idea as to why, though. Liberal then challenged Olney, and it's kind of been a friendly transatlantic competition ever since. This year, a 22-year-old took home the title. And how about this? A bull goes for a wild ride in Las Vegas. A man tried to lasso the bull in Vegas in a front yard on Wednesday morning. But that's not this guy's first rodeo, and he knew what was coming. Then came the big guns, if you will, an off-duty police officer who works with livestock, worked his magic, and was able to corral this massive beast into the back of a trailer. But quite the sight to see there in this Las Vegas neighborhood. Unreal. It is 4.55, everybody. And coming up next at 5, local stories for you from Detroit, Ferndale, and Inkster. Plus, we are following the very latest in this school shooting tragedy down in Florida. 17 people killed when a suspected teenage gunman opens fire. Now we're learning new information about the suspect and the investigation. We're going to have live coverage for you all morning long. But first, let's check in with Kim. We're anticipating a busy day on the roads with all the fog. How are we looking right now? Oh, yeah, it's foggy out there. Definitely get an early start, but luckily we don't have any accidents to report right now. We do want to talk about construction over on I-75, though. I'll tell you about that coming up at 5 o'clock. Brandon. Well, take a look downtown. Oh, we can't see anything. A dense fog advisory and rain showers in your Thursday forecast. The good news is we're warming up with you next. Local 4 News today at 5 a.m. Don't go away. I'm Olympic Gold. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News today at 5 starts now. Unimaginable heartache in Florida where more than a dozen people are killed when a young gunman opens fire inside of his former high school. This morning, we're learning new details about the gunman, the victims, and the heroes. But first, the fog. You're going to want to allow yourself some extra time getting to work and school this morning as we take a live look somewhere in Metro Detroit. <laughs> All that fog, kind of hard to try to make things out. This is Mount Clemens, our camera there, but uh, you wouldn't be able to tell unless we told you. Absolutely, it is definitely some thick fog out there, which will slow your drive down this morning. And also, you get a little disoriented because yeah. you can't see, you can't see the normal street signs. And so things are a little bit to. weird. Yeah, so you definitely want to take it a little bit slower this morning in of course, terms of the traffic and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Kim is keeping her eyes on that. Brandon also keeping his eyes on the fog for us after a, a nice warm up, in my opinion, yesterday. Yeah, it was nice with the sun today, even warmer without the sun and we showed you Mount Clemens. Let's clear up the view. We can't see anything. This is our Windsor camera looking across at the downtown skyline. Less than a mile visibility for a lot of us here in Metro Detroit. 41. The winds, if they were a little lighter, it would be the soupiest of green split pea soup you could find southwest winds though are at 13 and that does help mix and move the air around a little bit so it could be worse and it likely will get worse before it gets better dense fog advisory for all of us i-69 south through metro detroit until 9 a.m and you see visibility in most spots is about a half a mile to a third of a mile so be careful give yourselves extra time extra space for the car in front of you and the fog and drizzle out out there could lead to some issues on the roads as well. 40 at 8 a.m., 45 at noon, 47 later today with showers moving up from the south by about 2 o'clock. Right now, though, just seeing the low clouds, fog and drizzle. We'll look at those rain chances 
a little closer coming up. Kim, with your four live traffic cameras, what do you see? Oh, well, right now we're not seeing much. The good news, though, is that we don't have any accidents to report. If you take a look at the big picture here, uh, no red on our maps, but this is what we're seeing, which is really hard to see really anything. This is I-275 right at Grand River and Rhonda has said earlier, you kind of get disoriented when you're driving through this. So definitely you just got to stay focused, two hands on the wheel. And as Brandon said, plenty of space between you and the car ahead of you. Uh, but no accidents reported that this time. So that is the good news. We'll talk I-75 construction coming up in my next report at 514. Over to you. All right, Kim, thank you. We do want to turn our attention to the very latest following that Florida school shooting. While most students and adults were able to get out of that school safely, 17 people lost their lives. This is so sad. The grief and disbelief from the photos that you just saw only begin to tell the story. But here's the very latest. Overnight, police searched the home of the suspected gunman. The shooting happened at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, and this was in Parkland, Florida. Yes, in the southern part of Florida. As for the victims, we know 32 students and faculty were shot, and 17 did not make it. Local force Nick Monticelli joins us now live in the newsroom, monitoring all of the latest developments and certainly the fight for the lives of those survivors. Well, and most importantly out of that, Rhonda, is that we're told that of those others that were injured and shot in all of this, at least five of them are in grave condition. You look at this video as the suspect goes in to the jail confines there and as the students walk out and the paramedics go in and the canines go searching. It is an image, a story that we have seen play out so many times. And now this time the teachers in that school are saying we tried to prepare for this. While the scene unfolded outside in front of horrified parents inside, students captured exactly what was happening. Sheltering in place, teachers did their best to hide the teenagers from the threat. The gunman allegedly pulled the fire alarm and used smoke grenades to draw more students out. Teachers inside say this is something they have prepared for over and over again. They knew what I mean, they knew what to do. We knew what to do. And and even still, even with that, we still have 17, you know, casualties, 17 people that aren't going to return to their families. And to me, that's totally unacceptable. While SWAT teams work this massive campus, there was a lot of work to do. This high school has 3000 students. There was a uh, another body in front of me. Uh, on there was three on the bathroom door and another one. The suspect is 19 year old Nicholas Cruz armed with a semi automatic rifle and countless magazines. He's a former student who had been expelled for disciplinary reasons. He's just always been a really crazy kid. Like, and I, I heard him, I heard some people say that one day he would have done this. And unfortunately, I think that was today. I'm absolutely sick to my stomach to see children who go to school armed with backpacks and pencils lose their lives. Something you never think you're going to go through as a parent or as a student. Again, these unfortunately are images that we're almost getting used to seeing, which is sickening even for me to say. But Everod and Rhonda, something I do want to point out is we're used to seeing parents standing outside on the sidewalks on the other side of that crime scene tape, wondering what's happening. In today's age of social media, as you saw in some of these videos, some of these kids are on Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook showing it happening live. Can you imagine being a parent seeing your child in the middle of that? Absolutely feel terrifying. Absolutely helpless. Yeah. And, and there's nothing you can do, you know, watching all this unfold. Right. It's very scary and very sad. Nick, thank you for the update. Uh, sadly, though, today's shooting in Florida marks the 18th time, 18th time, let that sink in, that a gun, that gunfire has erupted on a school campus here in America since January 1st. Oh and it's God. only February 15th. Less than two months. Several were suicides or involved shots fired with no one injured. But with the Parkland High School shooting, three of the 10 deadliest mass shootings in modern U.S. history have come in the last five months, including the one yesterday. In and the for more information on this shooting, we'll continue to keep you updated on air and online at clickondetroit.com.
In other news this morning, a Detroit father will be arraigned in court today in the death of his infant daughter. Prosecutors say that 38-year-old Thomas Smith left his 2-year-old with her 7-year-old brother without any adult supervision. And when he returned home, she was lying at the bottom of the stairs. She was rushed to the hospital, but that's where she later died. Smith is charged with second-degree child abuse and will be arraigned today in 36th District Court. The Detroit Police Department is investigating that crash that killed officer Darren Weathers. Police Chief James Craig says speed was a factor in this crash that killed this man. And he says Weathers was involved in surveillance training, but is not sure about the specifics just yet. As you know, Weathers died after his cruiser hit another car, went airborne, and then hit a brick wall. Chief Craig says that he believes Weathers ran a red light at an intersection, which likely caused that crash. Because it was a surveillance exercise, dash cam video from the cruiser is unavailable. It has been a rough couple of weeks, though, for the Detroit Police Department. And this morning at 630, Chief Craig is going to be joining me to talk about how his department is handling the loss of fellow officers. Again, that's right here on Local 4. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned for that. Our hearts are certainly with all of them. Yes, they are. 507 is your time. And ahead this morning, more of what you want, less of what you don't want. We're going to explain the changes to watch for the next time you're online. And it took a while, but she would not be denied. Up next, the gold medal moment that was worth waiting for. Happy birthday if you're celebrating on this 15th day of February. Our Sunshine Awards going out to Jacob Van Marder, turning four today. Nathan Helchowski is five. Ariana Dunaway turns 10 today. And Katerina Campus, happy 13th birthday to you. Jonathan Johnson turning 13 today. Earl Brooks is 38. Gary Stafford Jr., happy 45th birthday to you and turning 53 today. Happy birthday going out to Terrence Arnold. Also celebrating today, Carolyn Robinson turns 55. Carl Arnold turns 60 today. Jerome Romanek is 70 years old today, an extended member of our Local 4 family, the father-in-law of one of our evening producers, Joda. So happy birthday to you, Jerome. Margaret Spratberry turns 90 today. Wow, happy birthday. And take a look at this. Beulah Pomeroy is turning 100 years old today. So a big happy birthday to you, Beulah. Incredible. And a happy birthday also going out to Shirley Lawless, Bob Kennerly, and Anthony Cornife. Happy birthday to all of you. We're back in a minute. Mom. Welcome back, everybody. The Winter Olympics continues, and finally, the winds died down enough to get yeah. some action on those ski slopes. <laughs> Team USA is golden in the mountains and looking for more medals tonight in prime time. Let's turn things over to Jay Gray. He's joining us live this morning in Olympic Park with a closer look at all the action. Good morning. Good morning, Everett. Good morning, Rhonda. And you know we're trying to take you behind the scenes when we can today. A little bit of what technology is doing at these games. This is the starting pistol or starting gun. Obviously, it's not. But this electronic device connected to a chip at the end of the race. So you'll see them speed skating a lot to give you the precise timing of when they leave, when they finish, and sometimes very much needed because they're so close. This is what's fascinating and new. This is a different chip, and this device is put on hockey players, skiers, uh, snowboarders, anyone who does anything, they can regulate everything, speed, height, distance. They can map out a corkscrew jump by one of those snowboarders, not used for scoring, but it is used to help the athletes train better and understand what they're doing a little more. Then you've got this shoe. Uh, this is what the Canadians are training in. Bluetooth inside this shoe. It gives them the data they need to hone their training perfectly right before their events. As far as data is concerned for the Americans, it continues to add up to gold. A big favorite tomorrow in the slalom, but boy, would this set the table for these games. For Michaela Schifrin and Team USA, the giant slalom, well worth the wait. And giant slalom gold for Michaela Schifrin and Pyeongchang. Postponed due to high winds, when she finally got the chance to race, Schifrin was golden. To come here and do that today was incredible, but of course now I have the slalom tomorrow, so I'm trying to like get the emotions under control and focus again. She's the gold medal favorite, and you can watch the women's slalom tonight in primetime. Now, your eyes to the back. Nick Deardorff, Nick Baumgartner going absolutely massive on that feature. The two Americans go down. In a wild, wide open snowboard cross final, the Americans finished out of the medal hunt after a spill. A showstopper, watch this. Oh. Beautifully done. Alexa and Chris Canaram didn't make the podium in the pair's figure skating finals during a routine, they say was about something more 
than a medal. We wanted to skate for the 17 children that died in the Florida shooting. And um, today it was much more than about us. Yeah, you know, that tragedy on the minds of a lot of athletes here, a lot of visitors, a lot of fans who are here, here as well. Everard, Rondo, back to you. Yeah, certainly on the minds of everyone. Uh, it is uh, definitely a tough, tough day for everybody here in our country. All right, Jay, thank yeah. you. We do want to remind everyone, though, you can enter for a chance to win some Olympic gear. That includes a watch, coffee thermos, and a sweatshirt that you see here on your screen. Yes, to get your hands on it, all you have to do is head on over to clickondetroit.com and send us a picture of you showing your Olympic spirit. And then tune in tomorrow morning because we're going to be announcing the winner. Good luck, everybody. All right, Brandon and Kim joining us now. So, so far, things have been a little easy for you guys, I feel like. Well, yeah, but it's only going to get worse with this fog. As the time goes <laughs> yeah. on, right? It's definitely I mean, going to be a slower commute, I would imagine. What did you guys, was really it was foggy when for you me. were driving it? Yeah. It, was, it was okay for me, but I could tell that if that fog comes down a little bit more. Yeah, last yeah. night it was pretty bad too, so this morning, be prepared. Brandon, what are we looking at? Well, the bar has apparently been set like, pff, like if we don't have eight inches of snow coming down, <laughs> Everett's like, well, you guys got nothing to do. <laughs> Job's pretty easy over there. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll take it. I like the warm up. The warm up creating some issues here, though, melting the snow, leading to this dense fog, melting the snow from the shoulders of the highways, creating some pooling and ponding in spots. And so it's. A little bit dangerous out there and we right now have 41 at Metro Airport with a mile visibility or less Ann Arbor right there near 40 degrees in all four zones with visibility way down and this dense fog advisory goes until 9 a.m. But I think we're going to have the low clouds the drizzle around throughout the day not constant or nonstop, but it's sort of a dreary looking day and we're warming up. So fog and drizzle, probably the thickest or heaviest through 9 or 10 a.m. And then by noon, cloudy 45 still could get a little drizzle by about 2 o'clock. A better chance for rain showers moving in from south to north and areas north of 8 mile will likely get into a better chance for rain showers the wrong time again during the evening commute, but middle upper 40s today. So a big time February thaw or melt happening over uh, yesterday and today. But this warm front comes up, settles in through the day today, brings some of these rain chances and then Colder air arrives for your Friday and Saturday. Take a look at uh, the computer model 2 p.m. Notice Lenaway, uh, Monroe counties and up into Wayne County. Then after that, again, eight mile is sort of the barrier for the first round of early afternoon showers. But during the evening drive, it does get a little bit more widespread over the area. Cooler air arrives tomorrow and may get a couple of pockets of snow later tonight, especially up north. And then on Saturday, we'll be watching snow trying to approach the area. I think Saturday night overnight into early Sunday, a little bit of snow. It's not going to stick around or amount to much, uh, but we do have 20s and 30s tomorrow after a nice warm day today uh, on Saturday teens to middle, maybe upper 30s uh, snow chances Saturday night, early Sunday, but Sunday quick bounce back to 40 and look at the numbers next week. A lot of kids on midwinter break and boy, it's going to be 50 to maybe near 60 for a couple of days next week. Kim for live traffic time. A little bit better out there. It is. Kinda. Thanks for noticing, Brandon. We did look at this camera about a half hour ago. This is I-696 right at I-75, and you can actually see cars now. Before, it was just like completely fog and couldn't see anything, but uh, it's getting better in some areas, but it really depends where you're headed today. You definitely want to just give yourself extra time because you're going to want to uh, drive a little bit slower today and give plenty of room between you and the vehicle ahead of you. Now let's talk about construction over on I-75. We've got this project happening over on the northbound lanes between M59 and University Drive. Expect one lane black there starting at 7 a.m., wrapping up at 3 p.m. And then a part of the same project, expect the east and westbound M59 ramps to northbound I-75 to close during that time of 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Over to you. 
Kim, thank you. At 519, we want to get to breaking news that we're following just into the local four newsroom. It's from Detroit's west side. As you take a look at this new video, two men have been shot and killed overnight while unloading groceries. This is the scene. It's on Ashton near Schoolcraft and the Southfield Freeway. And we're told that three gunmen ordered two men inside the home, and that's when they shot and killed them. A third person inside opened fire on those gunmen and they took off. Police have taken one possible suspect into custody so far, but they're still searching for two more. Our Nick Monticelli is heading to the scene. We'll have a live update from him shortly. Well, now we continue to celebrate Black History Month and honor some of our local heroes. This is Adrienne Bennett. She is the first black female master plumber in the U.S. and first female plumbing inspector in the state of Michigan. She was born in Chicago and her family moved to Detroit when she was just nine years old. And when she decided to start her own plumbing and mechanical contracting business in 2007 here, her son was off at college and her husband had his own career. Ms. Bennett has over 40 years of service here in the city of Detroit and today her company, Benkari, is growing and being contracted for major projects throughout the district of Detroit, including Little Caesars Arena. Time now is 5.20 and new this morning, new Pistons superstar Blake Griffin is facing some legal trouble. We'll have details on that, but first some good news for bad drivers. The state of Michigan getting rid of a big fee. Good Thursday morning, Friday Eve, and welcome back to Local 4 News today. 41 degrees and foggy, soupy out there. We'll have a dense fog advisory through 9 a.m. with fog and drizzle or frizzle through 9 and 10 o'clock this morning. Clouds at noon and rain chances moving up from south to north after 1 or 2 p.m. Kim? All right, Brandon. Well, it is wet out there. That snow has been melting and it is a foggy look right now. A look of I-275 right at Ann Arbor Road. There's no accidents to report at this time. Just give yourself some extra time because it is hard to see out there. All right, Kim, thank you. 525 is your time and Governor Rick Snyder, along with Michigan lawmakers, have agreed to a plan that would eliminate costly driver responsibility fees, a debt owed by more than 300,000 drivers. The deal would cut taxes and actually forgive drivers who have outstanding responsibility fees, which is more than $630 million. It would also gradually raise Michigan's personal tax exemption, which will provide a tax cut of about $25 per person. Governor Snyder proposed the deal to address unintended consequences of the recent federal tax overhaul. Still ahead, we're going to keep you updated on the breaking news we're following this morning of a deadly home invasion in Detroit. Two men killed by two mass gunmen. A live report on that coming up. Also an update on two school shooting plots. We've got details on this deadly attack down in Florida and how another one was foiled by the suspect's own grandmother. This is a Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. A tragic story here at home breaking overnight. Two men shot and killed by a masked gunman while unloading groceries at a home on Detroit's west side. We're going to have a live report for our Nick Monticelli there on the scene coming up. Also, as you're waking up this morning, depends on where you are, it could look like this out of your front door. Some thick fog that could cause some problems as you're hitting the road, slow you down a little bit. Brandon says that we are under a dense fog advisory. I feel like it looks like that anytime people wake up in you're their in a mind. Fog. Exactly. Right. <laughs> until you get the coffee going or until you get a hot shower or Very something. True. Whatever is your pick me up in the morning. Very true. Uh, but it will not be you your eyes deceiving you. There really is some fog yeah. out there when you start your drive this morning. And for that, let's get over to Brandon to talk about how thick it is and how long it's going to stick around this morning. Well, up here, it, mine lasts through like two o'clock in the afternoon. What do I do? Is there something I can take? For Maybe a, a five hour? <laughs> I need like a 12 hour just constantly going. We have uh, at least mild enough numbers to see continuing melting out there, and this is lending to the fog problem. Temps are essentially right around 40 degrees, 43 in Monroe, 39 in Ann Arbor, 39 Mount Clemens, 43 in Lapeer Metro, 41. So we're melting snow and we're 
adding to that low level moisture and dense fog advisory all the way through 9 a.m. where at times visibility a quarter of a mile or less tricky travel. We need extra distance, low beams just following all of the rules and we'll be all right, but not great fun to drive through and look at half a mile visibility Mount Clemens uh, over in Ann Arbor. It's a third of a mile down in Lenaway County and Gross Eel for uh, fog and drizzle again through eight, nine o'clock or a little later uh, through the lunch hour. Gray cloudy. 45 and an afternoon high of 47 with rain showers moving in a little heavier from south to north uh, by about two or three o'clock this afternoon. So watch out for that. We'll take a closer look at the radar coming up. Kim, though, standing by with a look at the roads on this foggy Friday Eve. Correct, and it is really foggy out there. However, people appear to be uh, driving cautiously because we don't have any accidents to report at this time, so that's great news. Let's just talk about those emergency repairs, pothole repairs over on eastbound I-696. This is what you need to watch out for. It could slow you down because, because between DeQuinder and Mound, there's only one lane open between 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. And then right at 3 p.m., uh, two lanes will be blocked there, and that's from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. This is a daily project that's going to continue until Sunday, so keep in mind that there will be slowdowns there, but it's all for a good cause, catching up those potholes that could really make your drive a lot worse than it's a little bit of traffic. Uh, speaking of traffic, though, we do want to let you know about some backups over on I-75 that you should expect a little bit later today because of construction. We'll talk about that coming up at 544. Back to you. Kim, thank you. Right now, we do want to get you caught up on the very latest on that deadly school shooting down in South Florida. 17 students and adults were killed, several others wounded, and are now fighting for their lives. It's, it's a tragedy. Local force Chris Pallone has the very latest. The chaos erupted just as classes were about to let out at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Police say a former student armed with a semi-automatic rifle pulled a fire alarm and then opened fire on unsuspecting students. After I started seeing people running, I heard six shots, loud, loud shots. Right after I heard that, I was like, oh my God, we gotta go. So I started running as fast as I can. Responding SWAT teams discovered students barricaded in classrooms where they waited to be led to safety by law enforcement. Um, we locked the door, we turned off the lights, and then we waited till the police said it was clear for us to leave. A chaotic scene ensued as students were escorted single file from the building as frantic parents rushed to the school searching for their children. Most of the victims were discovered fatally shot inside a classroom building, but some were discovered outside. About a dozen wounded students were transported to area hospitals. I'm absolutely sick to my stomach to see children who go to school armed with backpacks and pencils lose their lives. The suspect, identified as 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz, was taken into custody about a mile from the school. Students who know the suspect say he was troubled and had been expelled. He's just always been a really crazy kid. Like, and I, I heard him. I heard some people say that one day he would have done this, and unfortunately, I think that was today. Broken windows, riddled with bullet holes—a grim indication of what happened at this high school, where investigators worked through the night searching for evidence. Chris Pallone, NBC News, Parkland, Florida. Well, this unfortunate Florida shooting just adds to the list of the deadliest school shootings in U.S. history. On that list, the Virginia Tech massacre, many of you remember that one. That happened back in 2007 on April 16th. The shooter, Sung Hui Cho, who took the lives of 32 people. The 23-year-old Virginia Tech senior opened fire on the campus at 7.15 in the morning. That shooting also injured 25 people. Cho eventually killed himself after that rampage. Also, there is that Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in Connecticut that happened on December 14th of 2012. 20 year old Adam Lanza opened fire inside of that elementary school, taking the lives of 26 children. It was later discovered that Lanza was mentally ill and had killed himself as police approached the building. And the newest one, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Florida, where the alleged Gunman, 19 year old shooter Nicholas Cruz killed 17 people. Of course, we are continuing to follow the very latest on this out of Florida. You can too, just by going to the homepage of our website. Click on Detroit.com for that.
An 18 year old from Washington State is behind bars this morning after a journal was found detailing his plans to shoot at his high school classmates. Police say that the teen's grandmother foiled his plan after she called police on Tuesday after finding that journal and believing that the threats were credible. According to police, the teen had plans to top all other school shootings, aiming to get the highest number of fatalities in history, becoming infamous. Detectives say that he had innate, he had grenades and also semi-automatic rifles hidden in his bedroom. It really speaks to the importance that if you see something or if you hear of something to notify the authorities and that's what she did. And thankfully so, since the teen has not been officially charged as of yet, his name has not been released. A Virgil woman is facing a five year felony charge this morning after allegedly attacking her new boyfriend for not moving in with her. This is 36 year old Paulette Thompson, and she's charged with third time domestic violence following the January incident. When police got to her home, the man was found with several lacerations on his face and his neck. The two had only been dating for a few weeks before the attack. Thompson was previously convicted of two counts of domestic violence in 2017. Police in Inkster are asking for your help this morning in identifying several people wanted in connection to a break in. It happened on Avondale Road and all the action was caught on camera that you see here. Uh, kind of difficult to make out the faces though. You can see a group of suspects lurking around one riding a bicycle In another shot. You can see a suspect walking with a cart full of items as others are walking away carrying more items as well. Take a look. This, uh, these are the images of the men police are looking for, the surveillance images of those suspects. If you think you recognize any of them or have any information, you should contact Inkster Police. Local grocery store chain Nino Salvaggio set to pay out more than $135,000 in overtime violations to its employees in order to resolve a federal lawsuit. There was an investigation that turned up and that the store was in violation of the Fair Labor Standards Act after failing to pay employees for time spent on rest breaks that were shorter than 20 minutes. Now, failing to pay those employees resulted in the massive amount of overtime violations, but the company has agreed to pay back those lost wages plus interest to 212 employees. It is 537 here on your Thursday morning and ahead this morning. It's a surprising thrifty Thursday from Kim to Julio. Everyone knows Vicks Vapor Rub is great when you have a stuffy nose, good for your sinuses, mm -hmm. but did you know you could use it on your feet? For what? <laughs> Kim DiGiulio will have that for you coming up in Thrifty Thursday. And up next, we have a live update on our breaking news. Dick Monticelli there on the scene of this deadly home invasion in Detroit. Keep it here. Treat your... All right, welcome back, everyone. It is 541, and here at home, we're following breaking news from Detroit's west side. Very sad breaking news at that. Two men have been shot and killed overnight during a home invasion. Let's get to Lick Monticelli. He's just arriving on the scene to tell us more about what happened, how this unfolded, Nick. What have you learned? So, Rhonda, what we know right now is that there were two men unloading some packages and groceries out of the back of what appears to be their van over there, and then they were forced inside. But if you look closely, you can see evidence markers that are in the street here on Eaton at Ashton on Detroit's west side, pretty close to a school craft over here. So we're told, though, we can show you some video that was taken earlier, that these two men, the two victims who were shot and killed, were forced inside of their home by three suspects, and then they were shot and killed. The two victims are a man in his 50s, another man in his 40s, and there's also a brother to the victims that fired some shots at the suspects. DPD, though, was not sure if any of those shots uh, hit them or hit anything else, so they're trying to work on that as well. As far as suspect information goes, very, very sketchy, limited information. They said uh, a couple of guys wearing some ski masks and some hoodies, uh, and in their note to us, it said NFI, which means no further information. So they don't have much to go on as far as suspects goes, which is fairly unfortunate when you've got something like this. Uh, what precipitated this? What could have be what could be the motive in this? Also unknown. That's what the investigators are trying to work on right now. But it is incredibly rare and frightening, honestly, to have two men forced inside of a home 
and shot and killed. This wasn't uh, doesn't appear to be a random thing because these guys are prepared wearing masks and they knew their targets forced them inside. Now, once they got inside, it's unclear if they took anything, if this was a robbery as well. Also, some details we're trying to get from DPD. So a lot of things still unfolding. This happened at about 1230 last night. It's now 540 in the morning. So we are still very early in this process. But as you can see behind me, it is still an active investigation. And as soon as we get some more details, we'll let you know what those are. We're live here on Detroit's West Side. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. All righty. Very sad. Nick, thank you for the update. It is 543. And one of the newest Pistons might be facing some legal trouble. Blake Griffin's former fiance, Bryn Cameron, filed a new palimony lawsuit saying that the basketball star dropped his family to date model Kennel Jenner. Cameron, who shares two kids with Griffin, says that the Pistons forward was a womanizer who cruelly embarrassed his family with his public fawning over Jenner. Griffin and Jenner have reportedly been dating since last summer. Brandon, over to you. All right, your eyes do not deceive you. The background of our Windsor camera looking over the river toward the Detroit skyline. It's foggy. So am I a little, little bit today. Good Thursday morning. Numbers are warm, so the snow melts adding to moisture at the surface, trapped in low clouds, fog and drizzle through the morning hours. That'll slow you down a little bit, but uh, at least it's not super icy out there. I did notice driving in today on 94 that some of the shoulder snow melt is pooling and ponding in some spots, so some hazards to the fog. Numbers near 40 in all four zones, and visibility is a mile mile or less for most of us. A dense fog advisory I-69 South covering most of Metro Detroit through 9 a.m. I think the low clouds, the frizzle, the fog and drizzle combo will probably last a little bit longer than 9 a.m. It may not be as thick, uh, so the advisory may end at 9, but I think the low clouds, the soupy conditions through lunch, 45 degrees at noon. At least we hit 47 degrees or upper 40s uh, chance for that through the afternoon. The Winds will be coming out of the south southwest and the wet weather will also be coming out of the south southwest. Don't have really anything going on now. The southern half of lower Michigan is in the clouds north of that. It's a little bit clearer, but you can see the wet weather here with a warm front. It doesn't look real impressive right now, but uh, as we hit that two o'clock hour this afternoon, Lenaway, Monroe counties into Wayne starting to get a little wet here and it gets a little thicker or more widespread north of eight mile, probably after four or five p.m. So most of the wet weather uh, from the rain is later half of the day. It's just the soupy stuff early on tomorrow and Saturday are are noticeably cooler, but not brutal cold. 40 comes back on Sunday and get ready for more warm and wet weather. President's Day Monday and Tuesday at least of next week. But you'll like the numbers, the 50 to 55 ish. I love it when I can say double nickels, double nickels. Oh yeah, that's going to be great, Brandon. All right. Well, we do want to talk about that soupiness out there. It is foggy right now, so I want you to give yourself extra time, plenty of space between you and the vehicle ahead of you. But the good news is, is we are accident free right now. So we just want to talk about some construction over on northbound I-75 right at Goddard. Uh, one lane block there starting up at 10 a.m., ending at 7 o'clock tonight. And then over on the southbound service drive of I-75, you can expect the orange barrels out there as well between Clark and Junction. Only one lane open. This construction starting at 7 a.m., so just a little bit over an hour. And that's going to end uh, at 5 p.m. tonight, so keep that one in mind as well. But other than that, nothing else to talk about. Just give yourself some extra time with those foggy conditions. Back to you. Thank you, Cam. It is 547, everybody. Let's get into some of the events that are happening this weekend. It's Detroit's favorite dining event, Detroit Restaurant Week. That returns tomorrow, and it runs until Sunday, February 25th. Yeah, more than a week. You get yeah. 10 days to try more than 22 different restaurants throughout the city, and they are featuring three-course dinners for only $39 a person. So you can try out some great ones. I was looking at the list. That's like a deal. Grey Ghost, the Whitney, the Rattlesnake Club, Central kitchen Looking 24 grill yeah a lot of good ones and then kicking try. off this weekend and running every day through next sunday is the detroit boat show it's happening at cobo center and they're celebrating their 60th anniversary with some giveaways tickets are just 13 per person and children 12 and under are free 
All right, time now for some stories that you might have missed if you were a bit busy yesterday. In Troy, an elementary school teacher got the surprise of a lifetime. Yes, yeah, second grade teacher Ed Segovia. He was named Troy School District's Elementary and Overall Teacher of the Year on Wednesday, and it was certainly a day to celebrate. It's an award that comes with more than just flowers and a title, but also a brand new car. News that brought Segovia to tears. He says that while the recognition is nice, his goal is to get kids to love learning and reading. Segovia won the title over 36 other awesome teachers. So that is very cool. congratulations to him and all the other teachers that were in the running. Big congrats. Well, some good news right here in our very own local four family, our very own Carmen Harlan is the 2018 recipient of Judge Damon Keith's Soul and Spirit Humanitarian Award. Pretty huge honor. Carmen was honored on Wednesday at Judge Keith's 31st annual Soul Food Luncheon. Keith has served on the federal bench for more than 50 years and says that they typically try to pick someone from the black community during Black History Month who has done exceptionally well. He says that Carmen, quote, exemplifies the success of a black woman who has achieved national fame. So congratulations to Carmen and Judge Keith is looking great. Yeah, he is. 94 years old. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Check this out. Three, two, one. Oh, what sweet? is going on <laughs> down in Key West? About 600 lovers puckered up to recreate the most famous kiss in American history. I think they nailed it. Yeah, they did. <laughs> and this is the one between a sailor and a nurse in New York Times Square at the end of World War II. The kiss happened at the foot of a statue memorializing the famous smooch. Some couples even dressed up to reenact that legendary lip lock. I remember when they had that right there in Royal Oak, like mm -hmm. Woodward and 13 Mile. It's a they did massive something similar. statue. Yeah. All right, that's enough of people kissing. <laughs> Get a little sick to my stomach there. Why? Because <laughs> I, I saw some tongue. <laughs> it's like you haven't done that before. No comment. <laughs> Natural thing between couples. 5.50 is your time this morning. A Help Me Hank consumer alert about a change that you're seeing online. And the little known uses for Vicks Vapor Rub. <laughs> and your feet? Kim's going to explain that one coming up next. It's Thrifty Thursday when we come back. On the next Live in the D, they call him the Sneaker Wizard, and he'll have your old foot gear strutting in style. Plus, some home design advice for free today at 10 a.m. on Local 4. Today. Good morning under a dense fog advisory, so it's not just you. Get out of the fog. We have 40s, though, 41, melting snow leading to some of that fog development. But fog and drizzle, a uh, little slippery and soupy out there through 9 a.m. And then after that, still low clouds. The afternoon, though, after about 2 o'clock, rain will be moving in from south to north. At least we're in the middle upper 40s, Kim. Oh yeah, well, it is warming up out there, but that's melting the snow and causing some fog. Here's a look at I-96 right at Farmington Road. Not bad out here, actually, and no accidents to report at this time, so that's great news. All right, Thrifty Thursday. So if you've ever had a stuffed up nose, then you've probably used some Vicks Vapo Rub to help you breathe a little bit better. But there's actually quite a few other uses for this ointment. Here's a look. Vicks can relieve sore, overworked muscles. It provides instant relief. All you need to do is apply a generous portion to the achy area. While humans love this stuff, pets hate it. If you want your cat to stop scratching a wall, apply some Vicks. Your cat will hate the smell. You can also place an open bottle of it in an area that your pet keeps marking their territory. Now they'll steer clear of that area. Vicks will also help your headaches. Rub a small amount on your temples and forehead to relieve the pain. To prevent infection on a paper cut or a splinter, you can dab a small amount on any small cut. And believe it or not, Vicks can also kill nail fungus. Apply the ointment once a night to the affected nail for a two week period. The vapor rub will kill off the bacteria. Wow. wow. <laughs> I didn't know that there were that many. I mean, no. as a kid, my mom used to rub it all over my chest, <laughs> all over my nose, up in my nostrils. It really works, though. It does. For the record, I don't have nail fungus. Uh, right. But <laughs> just to it was that. just for, for those that may. There you <laughs> go. Exactly. Quick fix. Mm -hmm. Very, so very good information. Learn something new every day. And then At least every Thursday. Right. Especially on Thrifty Thursday. And your whole house will <laughs> yeah. smell like Vicks Vapor Rub when you rub it everywhere. <laughs> and your cats will be rolling their eyes. That video was cute. The cat was like, oh, I am not feeling Vicks. that. 
Thanks, Roy. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. You're welcome. It is 5.56, everybody. Google Chrome is rolling out a new plan to limit advertisements. Yes, Google says that new controls based on better ad standards will focus on pulling 12 types of ads. Their goal is to pressure publishers into dropping annoying advertisements that drive users to install third-party ad blockers. Users will receive notifications within the browser on sites where ads are blocked and can opt to choose whether or not to allow the ads. I consider myself pretty tech savvy. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what any of that meant. Did you? <laughs> well, yeah, those pop-up ads. I'm gonna have to go back and look at that. It yeah. is 557, coming up all new at six o'clock. Local stories for you from Ferndale, Inkster, and Detroit. Plus, we have a dangerous dog food recall to tell you about why several brands are issuing emergency recalls. We'll tell you what you need to know to keep your dog safe. And we're continuing to follow developments coming out of Florida after a young gunman opens fire inside of a high school, leaving 17 dead and dozens injured. Plus, we'll update you on the breaking news we're following right here at home. Our Nick Monticelli there on the scene where two brothers were shot and killed during a home invasion in Detroit. We're back in a moment. Local 4's Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And we're following breaking news of mass gunmen targeting a home on Detroit's west side. Two brothers shot and killed overnight while unloading groceries. Our Nick Monticelli is there live on the scene. Plus another unimaginable attack on school kids. A Florida high school lured out of their classrooms and into the path of a former classmate ready to kill. There's uh, another body in front of me. Uh, on there was three on the bathroom door and another one. I'm absolutely sick to my stomach. So sad. We have learned that 17 people, students and staff, were killed. Several others are fighting for their lives right now. And this morning we are learning more about the gunman and a possible motive. Certainly beginning our morning on a yeah. sad note, thinking of everyone down in Florida that's dealing with this horrible tragedy. A lot of news to get to this morning, but thank you for waking up with us on this Thursday. We'll get to those stories in just a moment. But first, we're talking about this fog, a, a serious fog, in fact, that has sort of blanketed Metro Detroit. Let's get on over to meteorologist Brandon Rue to talk about how thick this fog is. And well, it's kind of overshadowing the fact that it's a lot warmer outside. 41. Well, and that's part of the problem, the warmth and the melting snow adding moisture to the low levels. I promise this is a different view from our Penobscot. Then we've been showing you Mount Clemens, the Windsor camera. This is the Penobscot camera, but it's the same look. Soupy, 40 degrees, visibility is a mile or less, and the dense fog advisory we'll talk about in a minute means a quarter of a mile visibility or less possible through 9 a.m. The bus stop forecast the school lesson fog plus drizzle equals kids frizzle. Frizzle. frizzle just a little something to put a smile on your face it's a tough news day today today we're going to be in the 40s that's another good part of the uh, forecast today 47 this afternoon with rainy conditions after 2 p.m. moving up from south to north. Meantime, during the morning, it is a soupy dense fog advisory until 9 a.m. As Everod said, blanketing the area, but the low clouds and drizzle not really showing up on radar. We'll show you the rain this afternoon that will coming up. Kim has your four live traffic. How's it looking? Well, it's looking Actually, not too bad as far as accidents go. This is our big map here. No, no accidents to worry about right now or slow down. So that's the great news. And I've been looking at all of our MDOT cameras. Some areas a lot worse than others when it comes to that dense fog. This is I-75 right at Mack Avenue. And you can see that visibility isn't great here, but you can still see the car. So it's actually looking a little bit better than it was just an hour ago. So that's some good news. But you want to give yourself extra time no matter where you're headed just in case you do run into a foggy area. Also, speaking of I-75, We'll talk about some construction happening there coming up in my next report at 614. Over to you. 
All right, Kim, thank you. The images are so haunting seeing these students down in Florida forced to flee their high school as their parents are forced to wait and wonder if their child is OK. And this is all after their school was targeted and attacked by a lone gunman. Now 17 people are dead and more than a dozen others were injured. And we are learning about the suspect that is now in custody. He's a 19 year old male who had been expelled from that school. Natasha Chen joins us now from Parkland, Florida with the very latest. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School is closed until further notice. The public school that was home to some 3,000 students is now a crime scene. The first thing that popped in my mind was where's the shooter and where is he going next? At least 17 are dead and more than a dozen others injured after police say shooting suspect and former 19 year old student Nicholas Cruz opened fire as school was close to being dismissed for the day. He knows the school layout. He knows where everyone would be at as of right now. He, he's been in this fire drills. He's prepared for this stuff. Investigators believe the suspect pulled the fire alarm to draw people out of school in order to kill as many as possible. Cruz is expected in court today as investigators look into the teen's troubled past and variety of gun and violence related posts on social media. In Valentine's Day, everyone was happy spreading love and it just crashed down so quick. Uh, no one deserves this. The entire community in Parkland, Florida will need more of that love and support for the foreseeable future. It shouldn't happen anywhere in this country. And this we've got to find a way for this to stop. Yeah, we certainly have to. President Trump sharing his thoughts now about the shooting in Florida on Twitter. He says, quote, my prayers and condolences to the families of the victims of the terrible Florida shooting. No child, teacher or anyone else should ever feel unsafe in an American school. President Trump also tweeted that he spoke to Florida Governor Rick Scott ever since that shooting happened. We, of course, will continue to keep you updated as we get more information about the shooting down in Florida. And as always, for more information, you can go to our website, click on Detroit.com. It is 6.04 and we're following breaking news from here at home on Detroit's west side. Right now, the search is on for masked gunmen who forced their way into a home, forced two brothers into a home and then killed them. Yes, and the question now is why? Nick Monticelli is joining us now live from the scene. And Nick, we also understand that there was a third person that was already in that home that opened fire at those gunmen. So here's the thing. There were actually multiple people in that home. The story keeps evolving, Rhonda. So there was actually a mother in her 70s, her daughter, three brothers, and a longtime friend. So a total of six people were inside of this home. If you look behind me, you can kind of see through the, uh, the headlights over there some of the evidence markers, noting some uh, shell casings. So there were shots exchanged outside. And you mentioned there was uh, a home invasion. These guys did go inside of the home, but the two brothers that were killed were actually shot and killed in the backyard. We can show you some video from the scene. This all happened at about 1230 early this morning here at Ashton Eaton on Detroit's west side, pretty close to Schoolcraft. We have no idea what the motive is, but we do know that this family was out, uh, I think, running an errand. They came home to help get the mother back inside. She has a broken leg again. She's in her 70s. They were in the house for about 20 minutes. Then the two brothers came back outside to finish unloading their van, and that is when these three suspects approached them and forced them inside the home. Those suspects wearing ski masks and hoodies, so we have really no description on any of these guys. Now, so they did force them back inside. There was a lot of commotion. Somehow they got back outside. The two brothers again shot and killed. Now there was uh, again that sixth person, that longtime family friend. He did have a gun. He returned fire at the suspects, and that is what uh, chased them away. So again, you've got the two brothers killed. And you've got uh, three suspects. Now, of the suspects, we know that two of them, again, are wearing ski masks. A third maybe wasn't, and there was a, a canine track. And that canine tracked that suspect to a baby a couple of blocks away, not too far. Uh, however, as of right now, they're not certain that that is the suspect. They're just calling him a person of interest right now. This, as I mentioned, Everard and Rada, very convoluted, a lot of moving parts. Most importantly, we don't know the motive. We have no idea why this happened, but we do know that two brothers have been killed. Well, live here on the west side, Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. And a family left to mourn the loss of two of their family members. Nick, thank you. 
606 is your time. A Detroit father is going to be in court in connection to the death of his two-year-old daughter. Prosecutors say that 38-year-old Thomas Smith left his daughter in the care of her seven-year-old brother without any adult supervision. And when Smith returned home, his daughter was found lying at the bottom of the stairs. She was rushed to the hospital, but that is where she later died from her injuries. Smith has been charged with second-degree child abuse. As Detroit police mourn the loss of one of their own, they're also trying to figure out what happened in this deadly crash that killed 25 year old officer Darren Weathers. Weathers died after he drove his unmarked patrol car through an intersection, possibly through a red light, hitting another driver and slamming into a brick wall. Police say it was a training exercise, but Chief James Craig says that it was a training exercise that never should have happened the way it did. I don't sanction. The executive team didn't sanction. Surveillance training, I asked the commander over professional standards section if this was approved. He said it was not. Officer Weathers was a combat veteran and decorated officer who wanted to make sure that kids had a positive relationship with police. Very, very sad to see him lose his life. It's been a rough couple of weeks for Detroit police, as you can imagine. So this morning at 630, Chief Craig is going to be joining me to talk about how his department is handling this loss as well as the loss of other fellow officers in recent weeks. That's right here on Local 4 coming up at 630. Former White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon is scheduled to testify before the House Intelligence Committee today. Bannon's interview has already been rescheduled three times, and if he doesn't show today, lawmakers say that he should be held in contempt. It is now 608 and the reviews are in the most dependable automobiles and the least and it is not a good look for at least two of Detroit's big three. Oh boy, we'll have more on that coming up. Plus another gold medal for Team USA, Jason. Good morning. She tore down the slopes like a cannonball and now skier Michaela Schifrin is bringing home the trophy. She's not done yet though. Highlights are coming up. Today. Welcome back, everybody. At 610, we are continuing to celebrate our local heroes for Black History Month. And take a look. This morning, we are honoring the Honorable Denise Page Hood, Chief United States District Judge. Hood received a Bachelor of Arts degree from Yale University in 1974 and a law degree in 77. She then became the Assistant Corporation Counsel to the Law Department of the City of Detroit. Judge Hood held many county and state positions until she was appointed by President Clinton to a seat on the federal bench in 1994 and she became the Chief Judge in 2015. The Honorable Denise Page Hood. We're back in a minute. Welcome back, everybody. It is 612, and while you were sleeping, the good old red, white, and blue came away with another gold. Yes, and let's send things over to Jason with the very latest, and this particular gold medal was a long time waiting. Yeah, it didn't really come as a surprise, right? She's considered one of the best to ever put on skis. Michaela Schifrin, who headed into women's giant slalom as the top contender, delivered on the hype. A big favorite tomorrow in the slalom, but boy, would this set the table for these games. Michaela Schifrin flew past the world's best skiers to clinch her first gold in her first race, the giant slalom. And giant slalom gold for Michaela Schifrin and Pyeongchang. After enduring days of weather delays, the 22-year-old was both elated and emotional. To be able to put down a run, that run, I was really taking risk and fighting for it, and I'm so happy for that. A showstopper, watch this. Oh. Beautifully done. Married couple Alexa and Chris didn't medal after the second Paris figure skating event, but they did dedicate their performance to the victims of Florida's school shooting. Nurse with a shot, score! In ice hockey, American women coming up short against arch rival Canada. Two to one. And now some extracurricular activity. Team USA hoping for revenge after losing the gold medal to Canada in Sochi. Extracurricular activities. The U.S. has won four of its five gold medals in snowboard, but Americans failed to make the podium in snowboard cross. Now here's where we stand compared to the rest of the world. Germany's still in the lead for the most gold with eight. And Norway still in the lead with most medals overall at 16. And what, so, 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 so,
Rhonda, back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. And a reminder that you can now enter for your chance to win some Olympic swag. Compliments of us. We have a watch there, coffee thermos, a sweatshirt. And if you'd like to win big, just head on over to clickindetroit.com and send us a photo of you showing your Olympic spirit. And then tune in tomorrow morning because we're going to be announcing the big winner. Good luck. Meanwhile, we want to get over to Brandon with a look at our forecast, and we definitely enjoyed that warm-up yesterday. It was nice, and it is sort of kind of leading to some of the problems today. The sun and the melt creating some extra moisture at the surface, and we have fog and drizzle. 40 degrees for the bus stop this morning. Our sunrise time is 730, and the drips won't be that big, but they will be that slow. That's how drizzle works. Here's a look at uh, some of the numbers for all of us around 40. We love the number four here on local four. Four zones. We have our metro zone, the warm spot, Gross Eel at 44. Our west zone, Howell at 42. Even up north in our north zone, Lapeer at 43 right now. But we're all in this soupy, dense fog advisory until 9 a.m. And I think the low clouds, the frizzle, We'll stick around a little bit longer than 9 a.m., but maybe the thickest right now through 8 or 9 o'clock. And the worst of it has been down in Lenaway County, but just about anywhere you go, you're going to run into limited visibility, slippery roads from all of this melt, and a little bit of that drizzle happening through the morning. 45 degrees at noon, 47 later on, so it's another melt day aided by rain chances, especially after uh, one or two o'clock this afternoon. We have this warm front coming up and that will be a little spark for some of these showers. Here's two, three o'clock and you can see south of eight mile through the early afternoon and then late afternoon through the evening drive. It does the rain does get a little more widespread and then tonight overnight cooler air coming in down into the 20s first thing tomorrow with low and middle 30s but Friday sunshine a pretty calm average kind of a February day tomorrow and Saturday another cool one Sunday though back near 40 degrees with uh, the chance of 50 to 60 degree temps Monday and Tuesday 1-800 Hansen's weather window Look pretty cool Joe there. Joe Lewis. Punch. All right. Well, we do want to let you know about one accident out there. This is for those of you traveling through the Warren Air area. Uh, the southbound side of Mound, right at 10 Mile here, an accident that has a lane block, so be careful there. And then just be careful of the fog everywhere you're going because it is, we do have that dense fog advisory right now, but that's the only accident to worry about. We just want to let you know about this construction on, no, <laughs> excuse me, northbound I-75 as well between M59 and University Drive. One lane block there between 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. and then also a part of this project east and westbound M59. The ramps to northbound I-75 will be closed that during that same time 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Rhonda. All right, Kim, thank you. It is 618 and in consumer headlines this morning, new vehicles getting the most dependable title. Also, Home Depot and Lowe's are going on a hiring spree. But first, an emergency recall for dog owners over some dog foods. Let's get to Mirabel Aber joining us now live from NASDAQ with more. Good morning, Mirabel. Hey, good morning, Rhonda. Four dog food companies are recalling product due to fears of salmonella. This follows reports of six pets dying or becoming ill. Recalled products include some from Darwin's Natural and Zoologic's Pet Foods. Others are Raws for Paws Ground Turkey, Red Marn's Bully Sticks, and some Beefy Munchies Dog Treats from Smokehouse Pet Products. You can find more details on the recalled products on the FDA's website. All right, it's a hiring spree by Home Depot and Lowe's as they brace for the busy home improvement season. Home Depot says it will hire 80,000 workers for the season. Lowe's has plans to hire 53,000 temporary workers, according to Fortune magazine. Both retailers will be looking for workers in a tight labor market with an unemployment rate at 4.1%. That's the lowest in years. Buick, Lexus, and Porsche brands earn the best scores in the annual J.D. Powers dependability study, this according to Fortune magazine. So the study looked at vehicles from the 2015 model year. They were judged on the number of problems the original owners encountered over the past 12 months. Chrysler was ranked the least dependable brand with Cadillac and Jeep also near the bottom. That's the latest in this. Have a great one, Rhonda. All right, thank you.
It is 619 now and scammers looking for new ways to get your money. We're going to reveal the troubling trend that centers around gift cards from Amazon. Plus, doctors have a new tool to help diagnose concussions, and it doesn't involve going into that giant machine. And before we go to break, let's meet today's Facebook friend for the day. This is Jenny Leishman. She is from Marysville. She's pictured here with her husband, Jim. She is a retired principal who loves to follow her two kids' activities, read books, hang with great friends, and get out into our great state exploring. Ah, oh, sounds like a great life. We have something for your pets so that you can spoil your pets. We have a $25 gift card to Premier Pet Supplies. It has locations in Beverly Hills, Rochester Hills, Livonia, Nova. Bye. All for being our friend of the day. And to everyone else, don't forget, if you want to be our next friend of the day, make sure you like the Local 4 Facebook page and click on that friend of the day tab. We're back in a moment. Happy Friday Eve. We're getting closer and it is soupy out there. 41 degrees with a dense fog advisory. So give yourself a little extra time. It is uh, very wet on the roads and visibility less than a mile in a lot of spots. Could be a quarter mile or less, but we are middle upper 40s today. After 2 p.m., all bets are off. Wet weather moving in from south to north. Yeah, Brandon, it really uh, depends on where you are this morning. This area, not too bad. Southfield Freeway right near I-94, but you can see that those roads are wet because that snow is continuing to melt. So just be careful, but uh, no problems you need to worry about in this area right now. All righty, Kim, thank you to 624, everybody. Let's turn to good health now. The FDA has approved a new blood test that can help detect concussions quicker without the need of x-rays. The test is called the Brain Trauma Indicator and measures proteins in the blood that are released from the brain within 12 hours of an injury. The proteins can help doctors predict which patients would benefit from a CT scan to look for brain lesions, but doctors say the biggest benefit would be to help rule out patients and spare them from unnecessary imaging. All right, so next at 630, local stories for you from White Lake Township, Inkster, and Detroit. Plus, charged for attacking her boyfriend, but it's the reason why in just a few weeks of the relationship, that's so shocking. And we are continuing to follow breaking news from Detroit's west side, where two brothers were shot and killed in a home invasion turned deadly. We'll have a live report from our Nick Monticelli when we come back. You just... Good morning, everyone. The Pistons looked like they were cruising into the All-Star break with renewed vigor. They had a 30-point lead last night in Atlanta in the third quarter. But then the Hawks go on a 54-30 run, so the Pistons hang on, limping to the break with a 104-98 win over Atlanta. We've got highlights. Second quarter, Pistons with the ball. They get to Blake Griffin, who's going to bury this three-pointer. He had 13 points, 12 boards, and 9 assists at the half. Pistons led it. 45 to 33. Third quarter, Pistons with the ball. Ish Smith with a nice move here gets the layup of Fowley at 22. Pistons led 57 35. Fourth quarter, Pistons with the ball. It's Blake Griffin. He's going to get it to Andre Drummond for the slam. He had 13 points, 15 boards. Pistons still led by 10, but then Atlanta made it really uncomfortable. Is Isaiah Taylor all the way for the layup? That cut it to four, but the Pistons hang on. Stan Van not very happy. College basketball last night in Ann Arbor. Michigan knocked off Iowa, the final 74 to 59. I'm Bernie Smolovitz. We'll see you later today at 5, 6, and 11. It's here. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news, family members, women, children, and friends inside of a home during an ambush and a shootout that left two brothers dead. And in Florida, at least 17 people were killed when a former student went on a shooting rampage inside of his former school. And now new information about the gunman is being released. And protecting those who take a vow to protect and serve. A lot of heavy hearts in the Detroit Police Department these days. And Chief James Craig is here in our studio to talk about it more. Well, it is Thursday. The Friday temperatures Eve. are warmer Friday Eve. About a 25 degree temperature jump from this time yesterday morning. Amen to that. I'm looking <laughs> ahead towards spring. We got a lot of heavy news to talk about this morning, but at least we can start with that, right? Yeah, in two weeks is going to be March. Oh, I like the How sound of that. that? St. Patrick's Day. Brandon, what? Yeah, we're already thinking about that. Why not? Might as well. Valentine's Day is behind us. <laughs> That's right. Somebody's birthday. Who's 311? 
What? It's not just a band. You're with me. March is a great month, but let's hang on. We have still some really good stuff happening here in February. We have, it's a tough word to say. It's the hardest month to say. Some people just say February, <laughs> February. <laughs> but it's tough for kids too, but this is the best view that we have had yet this morning. It's been soupy and thick all morning with fog. 41 degrees right now, two mile visibility, which will take, but we do have this dense fog advisory, mainly Port Huron I-69 South and covering all of us through the morning hours, fog and drizzle making it tough to see, but the fog and drizzle through the morning will give way to some cloudy skies midday and rain chances, especially 2 p.m. on moving up from south to north. 47 degrees today. We have oh man, <laughs> my turn. I All right, got, well, <laughs> we've got to talk about I your commute. quit. <laughs> because it is foggy out there, so just be careful about that. But um, I want to let you know about a few accidents to look out for. We've got this one over on southbound I-75 right at Dixie Highway, uh, blocking your right shoulder here. And then also we've got an accident over in Warren that could slow you down if you do travel on Mound. This one on the southbound lanes right at 10 mile, and we've got a lane block there. But other than that, those are the only problems this morning. I will keep a close eye on both of those accidents and bring you an update on what's going on with both of them coming up in my next report at 644. Back to you. Kim, thank you. We do want to turn our attention to South Florida right now and get you caught up on the deadly school shooting from Wednesday. 17 people in all, both students and adults were killed. Several others are wounded and fighting for their lives this morning. Local force Chris Pallone is in Parkland, Florida, which is just above Miami, where we're learning more about this gunman. The chaos erupted just as classes were about to let out at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Police say a former student armed with a semi-automatic rifle pulled a fire alarm and then opened fire on unsuspecting students. After I started seeing people running, I heard six shots, loud, loud shots. Right after I heard that, I was like, oh my God, we got to go. So I started running as fast as I can. Responding SWAT teams discovered students barricaded in classrooms where they waited to be led to safety by law enforcement. Um, we locked the door, we turned off the lights, and then we waited until the police said it was clear for us to leave. A chaotic scene ensued as students were escorted single file from the building as frantic parents rushed to the school searching for their children. Most of the victims were discovered fatally shot inside a classroom building, but some were discovered outside. About a dozen wounded students were transported to area hospitals. I'm absolutely sick to my stomach to see children who go to school armed with backpacks and pencils lose their lives. The suspect, identified as 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz, was taken into custody about a mile from the school. Students who know the suspect say he was troubled and had been expelled. He's just always been a really crazy kid. Like, and I, I, I heard him. I heard some people say that one day he would have done this, and unfortunately, I think that was today. Broken windows, riddled with bullet holes, a grim indication of what happened at this high school, where investigators worked through the night searching for evidence. Chris Pallone, Local Four. So incredibly sad and so scary for no. any parent, you know. We on Wednesday, the shooting in Florida marks the first of the year for that state, but we did some digging and unfortunately it has happened many times across the country already this year. This is very alarming, but just seven weeks into 2018 and there's already been 18 times that gunfires erupted on a school campus. Several were suicides. We should point that out or involve shots fired with no injuries. But the Parkland shooting, three of the 10 deadliest mass shootings in modern U.S. history have only come within the last five months. That is very, very alarming. For more information on this shooting, you can head to clickondetroit.com. We've got the latest coverage there and we'll continue to keep it updated as new details come into the newsroom. Here at home, we continue to follow breaking news now from Detroit's west side. Sadly, that is where masked gunmen killed two brothers overnight. The attack turned into a shootout. Local force Nick Monticelli is live outside the home where investigators are still trying to piece this all together. Nick, talk us through what you've learned about what happened. They are still working on this. In fact, there are, there are evidence technicians across the street looking for bullet holes in other houses back behind us. But in front of us over here, you can see where the uh, a lot of this action happened. We can show you some video from earlier this morning at about 1230 is when this happened. We were told there were basically six people, five family members and a longtime friend, a mother, daughter, 
three sons and a longtime friends. They were out running errands. They got back inside of the home. They got the mother inside. She's in her 70s, has a broken leg, got her inside of the home. They came back outside. The two brothers did. That is when they were ambushed, forced back inside of the home, and there was a struggle. Now, this is being called a home invasion, but it is a little strange because technically, the two brothers were shot and killed outside of the home in the backyard. So there was a struggle going on. Those two brothers were shot and killed. And then a longtime family friend had a gun and started shooting back at those uh, suspects. So <clears throat> they fled, they took off. And unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of information about them. All we know is that they were wearing hoodies, dark ski masks, and that's about it. So nothing really to help find these suspects. There were uh, canines brought in to try to track some of them. They did find a person a couple of blocks away. That person could be connected to this armed, uh, this home invasion and double murder. But as of right now, they're just calling that person a person of interest. But most importantly, two brothers shot and killed behind this home here. Uh, a total of six people inside the home. Those are the only two that were hurt. And then they've got uh, that one person of interest in custody and still searching for the two other suspects. We're live here on Detroit's mm. West Side, Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. Certainly a lot of fear in this neighborhood, Nick. Did police think that this was random or that they may have targeted this family? They're not sure just right now. They're calling it a robbery, but we're not sure what they took, if anything. The way that it all played out and the way that they had their masks on and kind of targeted these folks, they're not sure exactly. Mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of right in the middle of between it being random or a target of attack. All righty. Nick Monticelli reporting live for us this morning. Thank you for the update. At 637 now, we want to get to some stories that are making headlines all across Metro Detroit. Yes, yeah, so we're going to take you to Ferndale and White Lake Township, but we do start here in Inkster, and that is where police are searching for individuals wanted in connection to a break-in that happened along Avondale Road. This is the surveillance video that you can see of the suspects walking around. One suspect appearing to be on a bike and another shot you can see a suspect walking with a cart full of items and as others are carrying other items you see here these are the images if you think that you recognize any of these men you are asked to contact inkster police and in ferndale now paulette thompson who's pictured here on your screen charged with third time domestic violence this 36 year old woman allegedly attacked her new boyfriend all because he wouldn't move in with her. When police got to her house, the man was running out of it and had cuts on his face and his neck. Police say that the two had only been dating for just two or three weeks before this happened. Thompson was previously convicted, though, of two counts of domestic violence against another man. This was just last year, 2017. And over in White Lake Township, we are hearing from that off-duty officer we showed you yesterday who saved a man's life with the Heimlich maneuver right there in a restaurant. Officer Jessica Snow is her name, and she was there eating at Leo's Coney Island when she noticed the man choking. Her training kicked in, and she rushed over to help. I said, are you choking? And he shook his head yes, and I said, can you breathe? And he shook his head no, and so I knew right away that you have to start doing something quick. Wow. And she did. This isn't the first time either. Officer Snow has saved a life with the Heimlich maneuver. She helped someone else a couple of years ago at another local restaurant, ironically. Well, good for her. Right place, right time. Never off duty, always protecting right. and serving. And she can make it now two in a row. Yeah, Jason joining us in studio now. Michaela Schifrin is one of the latest Americans to add to our medal count. Don't you feel like you need that deputy anytime you go out to a restaurant now? Yeah. <laughs> Today she'll go for gold again. Schifrin leads the U.S. skiers into action in the women's slalom, an event she is favored to win, especially after her spectacular performance in the giant slalom. She is hailed as one of America's best hopes for Olympic gold. Jesse Diggins is currently in fifth for the 10K freestyle ski. She could make history if she wins, giving Team USA its first ever Olympic medal in the 10K freestyle. In figure skating, 18-year-old Nathan Chen will return to the ice for men's short program along with Adam Rippon and Chen. And Rippon both, uh, both won bronze medals in the team figure skating event. The USA men's ice hockey team will look to respond today and rebound as they, as after losing to Slovenia yesterday, giving up a two-goal lead to lose in sudden death. Today, they will take on Slovakia. And remember, if you've missed any of the action or want a complete list of today's games, just head over to clickondetroit.com. Back to you.
definitely right. be watching Nathan Chen. Yes, we will. I all can't wait for that tonight. <laughs> 640 is your time. Scammers are always looking for new ways to get your money. And coming up, the troubling new trend that centers around gift cards from a very well-known online retailer, Amazon, and how criminals use your trust in that company to steal your money. But first, Detroit Police Chief James Craig is in studio to talk with us about the heartbreak that the department is dealing with following the deaths of two officers. I'm going to talk to him about the uptick in violence that we've seen against officers lately and what he thinks needs to be done. That's coming up next. Sky Forge. A department overcome with tragedy. The men and women who vow to protect and serve, paying the ultimate price. In a span of just three weeks, the Detroit Police Department has lost two officers, their watch ending way too soon. I want to thank God for giving me a beautiful young man. In late January, Officer Glenn Doss Jr. was shot while on a domestic violence run. He died just three days later. On Tuesday, Officer Darren Weathers killed after a training exercise went terribly wrong. Both young police officers with promising futures. And in the same span, two other officers and an off-duty Detroit Public Schools officer injured by a gunman. The violence is, is so bad right now, and uh, it's almost like police officers get a, a bullseye on their back. And it's sad to hear about any officer in the line of duty uh, having something like that happen to them. Joining me now in studio this morning, Police Chief James Craig, thanks for taking time out of your, oh. your very busy schedule to, to talk with us and talk us through all of this. Uh, first of all, I, I just want to get right into it as a department as a whole. How are you guys doing? Uh, you know, it's tough. Mm -hmm. We're hurting. Yeah. You know, uh, the officers are resilient. Mm -hmm. Uh, and despite that, you know, I was reflecting on uh, one of the officers was shot in the incident the other day and I mm -hmm. went, I was at his bedside in the hospital and the first thing he said to me is, I'm ready to go back to work. Wow. That's the kind of officers we have here in the Detroit Police Department. Wow. So I'm humbled, I'm proud, but uh, certainly it's tough. I got a call from Los Angeles from one of my colleagues who said, I don't know how you do it. Mm -hmm. He said, in fact, I decided because of what's going on in Detroit, I'm retiring. Wow. And you know, I'm excited about the work that we do here. I'm committed. Uh, it's tough work, uh, but certainly I don't think I know of another time uh, in the span of my career where I've seen this type of violence against police officers. And, and it really should just never happen. I mean, these officers are dedicating their lives to protect and serve. Absolutely. And one thing that the Detroit Police Department is big on is community policing. So the relationship that you guys have with the community is, is a special one. How do you talk with these officers once something like this happens again and again? You know, you just keep the lines of communications open. I, I got to give a lot of credit to our peer support. Uh, we have a, a peer support function that we went online probably three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, that has worked in so many uh, grand ways in terms of, you know, healing and, and moving forward. Uh, but, you know, one of the things I've talked a lot about, you know, certainly our dealings with people suffering from mental illness. Right. That's our challenge. I mean, you know, our prayers go out to the families out in Florida, uh, the mass shooting incident there. And already we're hearing conversations surrounding that this young man was troubled. Uh, so when is it going to stop? When right. are we going to do something to fix this problem? What are your thoughts on that? What do you think is the solution when it comes to mental health illness and gun control? Is there something that you think should be done? Well, let me focus on the mental health for a moment because really the problem is it's moved away from the mental health professionals to law enforcement. So if you talk to Sheriff Napoleon in his jails, he'll tell you, that anywhere between 70, 80 percent of his inmate populations is suffering from some type of mental illness. Okay. So what are we doing? We're treating mentally ill in the jail. We're criminalizing the mentally ill. And so teaching police officers how to mitigate uh, an incident involving a mental ill is not the answer. The answer is sustained treatment. It needs funding and it needs to happen now. Something before an incident happens. It's going to happen again. Okay. This situation in Florida, it's going to happen again. And we talk about it, we grieve. Uh, the situation involving our officers who were shot, mm -hmm. uh, indications of mental illness. We talk about it, we grieve, we say things have got to change. But what has changed? And I'll tell you quite frankly, I'm done talking. 
We need people to step up and make this thing happen. Who would those people be? People who make the laws, mm -hmm. fund it, because right now uh, we're just in a vicious cycle. I mean, uh, we, we look at Florida, we look at our police officers, and we all know it's going to happen again. It's not gloom and doom, it's the reality of the world we live in today. Can it ever be stopped? Is there a solution if you could wave your magic wand and just make it all go away? Sustain treatment in facilities. Mm -hmm. Sustain treatment in facilities. Uh, if you talk to uh, police officers who've been around for years, uh, when things really started to shift pre-1992 when the funding was stripped, they said they saw an immediate uptick. I'll give you another great example. So Detroit Police Department handles roughly 500 calls involving the mentally ill a month. Wow. That translates into 6,000. Of that number, roughly 1,200, 1,300 involve mentally ill persons who are armed. So you don't hear a lot about it. You don't hear about officer-involved shootings. You don't hear about officers being shot. When you look at those, those, those large numbers, mm -hmm. One, we're doing it right, but our officers are in extreme risk when they're encountering, especially those suffering from a violent mentally ill. Yeah, they certainly are at risk. And real quick, before I let you go, when it comes to recruiting new officers for the department, given the recent events, is that difficult? You know, I gotta tell you, it, it's, it's really amazing uh, at the number of people who come into the, pl the police department now. This one, a lot of departments are having trouble. Okay. But we've created what I like to say uh, an environment of excitement. Mm -hmm. There's opportunity in the Detroit Police Department. The city is on a huge turnaround. Mm -hmm. So people want to be part of that. And so it works for us. But I will tell you, these young people come in eager to do the work. Mm -hmm. They understand the dangers. Uh, I will tell you, uh, I talked to a number of officers who were partners with some of these officers who have been shot. Mm -hmm. I mean, they went to the academy with them. They're troubled, and they say, I just want to get back and continue to do the work. That's remarkable. We appreciate the Detroit Police Thank Department. You. We here at Local 4 and the rest of the Metro Detroit community standing with you guys to make sure that we don't see tragedies like this happen again, anything that we can do. Right. So we thank you for your well, time. Well, we, we appreciate, appreciate you, and, we, and especially giving us a form to keep this out there. We've got to do something. We, uh, do. We're, we have a national crisis. We do. We certainly do. We'll be working together with you to see how we can make this stop. All right. Thank you so much thank for your you. time. Brandon, we'll send it over to you. And yeah, how lucky we are to have Chief Craig, who is, you know, the shoulders of our department, very media savvy, media friendly, and we, we thank him for all he has done, all he is doing. And with somebody dealing with mental health issues in their own family, I think we all need to do a little bit more, right, in acknowledging it, trying to enforce getting that help uh, from w with inside of our own homes and uh, hopefully cutting off some of these problems. Anyway, we have some fog out there in a dense fog advisory this morning. Very soupy, very slippery. 47 this afternoon, though. Rain moving up from south to north by uh, 2, 3 o'clock into our south zone and then spreading across the area through the mid-late afternoon and beyond. Tomorrow and Saturday are cooler. 20s and 30s tomorrow, but sunshine comes back. And Saturday night may get a few flakes. And Monday, it's back to liquid precip as those numbers shoot up again next week, President's Day and mid winter break for a lot of kids. All right, well, it is foggy out there and that's causing some trouble on the roads. This is a look at an accident over on westbound I-94. Right now, that ramp to southbound Lodge is closed right now because of this accident. And then also right in that area on westbound I-94, the right lane is blocked. So expect a slowdown in this area and then just give yourself some extra time because it's really hard to see plenty of room between you and the vehicle ahead of you. Over to you. Kim, thank you. We do want to get you to a Help Me Hank consumer alert this morning. There is a troubling trend that is centering around gift cards from well-known online retailer Amazon and how criminals are using your trust in Amazon to steal your money. Tracy Sanders is a huge football fan. His love for the game is all over his home. Well, that's why I stick with DirecTV because of the NFL package. Just before the holidays, he got a phone call. The 877 number on the caller ID was one he knew. Direct TV. They knew I was in my free movie preview and they wanted to give me the free movie package.
for a full year of 12 months, they were going to reduce my cable bill or direct TV bill um, by half for the next 12 months as well. Tracy signed up for a special deal, but it was about to expire. So the promise of another cheaper price sounded pretty good. And uh, the only way to do it, they were doing a promotion with Amazon um, with their gift cards. And if I purchased an Amazon gift card, I had to pay four months in advance. Buy an Amazon gift card for $320. Give that card number to Direct TV. Well, I thought it was fishy. Despite that feeling, he was eventually convinced it was legitimate. The callers knew details on his account, and he recognized the number on his caller ID as Direct TV's number. But that all ended when the mailman came, and his typical bill was still due. And that's when I called Direct TV, transferred from person to person to person, and they basically told me, yeah, you've been scammed. Uh, sorry for your luck. So Tracy called his credit card company, which reversed the charge for that gift card, but that didn't go over well with Amazon. So then Amazon turned around and canceled my Prime account and said any quarters you place will all be um, canceled and you would get nothing. While he got his Prime account back, Tracy says Amazon still is challenging the decision to reverse the credit card charge. He could still wind up on the hook for that gift card payment he made, trying to get a good deal on satellite TV. Well, well, Seems well. fishy. Mm -hmm. Definitely question it. Yeah, for sure. It is 6.53. We want to let you know what's coming up tomorrow at 6 a.m. As seen on TV, put to the test. It claims to track to trap mud like a magnet without even wiping your feet. But will it really prevent people from dragging dirt all over your home? We're going to test it out. The clean step mat is what it's called, and we're going to test it out to see if it's worth your money. That is tomorrow at 6 a.m. I need that for my house. I got two <laughs> kids. Only one of them walks. A but lot of parents. You know too. what I mean. We're back in a minute. <laughs> the Detroit Post. And a big thanks again to Chief James Craig for stopping by this morning. Yes, we'll put that full interview with him on our website at clickondetroit.com. Have a great day, everybody. Clear the fog. Yes, for sure. It's really foggy out there.